Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 29th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another one of my climate and clean energy video blogs. Now for this segment, what I'm going to do is provide you with an update for Arctic sea ice and Arctic sea ice trends for early summer of 2018. And starting off this segment, what, what we're going to do is look at present sea ice extent, which is appears to be tied or close to tied with 2014 and 2006 for sixth lowest on record for the date. And I'm going to go ahead and blank these yearly trend lines out so we can see where we are presently in 2018. So as of June 28th, so yesterday, Arctic sea ice extent according to the National Snow and Ice Data Center was 10,195,000 square kilometers. And this is slightly above record low ranges for the day. Maybe about, looks like, well, not, I wouldn't say slightly above, more like about 300,000 square kilometers above record low measures for the day. And CS extent has been declining rather rapidly overall throughout June, but has not yet hit a an acceleration cliff that that could help to push it into closer to record low ranges for both this month, next month, and for the end of melt season. Present trends, and this is just providing an analysis of trends, Present trends indicate that Arctic sea ice might bottom out between around 4.3 to 4.5 million square kilometers by the end of melt season, and that would not be enough to achieve a new record low, but would still be in the range of, of some of the more recent low years. And so we are still in a regime of much lower than normal sea ice, but present trends do not seem to indicate that we will hit a new record low this year unless something rather unexpected or extraordinary does occur. Now that said, I'm going to take a look at the overall Arctic and give you an idea of what's going on and and I'm, I'm going to let you know that despite the fact that we don't appear yet to be on track for record low sea ice extent this year, there are some areas of concern. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this map, animation map, into motion for you so you can look at what's been going on over the past week. Now, just want to note that I'm going to go ahead and run this a few times. I just want to note that where you see white on the map, some of the white is ice and some of the white is cloud. So, so as you see these uh, figures dance around here, the more ephemeral white is cloud and the more solid white is ice. I'm going to go ahead and zoom, on some re zoom in on some regions and talk about some of the trends we've been seeing. Now for Baffin Bay, we see sea ice retreating relatively rapidly as we would expect for this time of year. Similar for Hudson Bay, sea ice retreat is, is relatively rapid. We also see a lot of melt ponding and sea ice retreat into the Canadian archipelago zone, particularly near the Beaufort Sea, but also starting to invade in here through the Baffin Bay region. The Nara Strait region has yet to clear out, but we are starting to see some signs that clearing is starting to occur. And during July and August, this region is, is a one to look out for for potential sea ice export from the 
Arctic Ocean Zone near Greenland and the Arctic Archipelago, and this region is one of the only remaining regions of thick ice left in the Arctic. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here on the Beaufort Sea and show you what's going on. Beaufort Sea is, the Beaufort Gyres appears to be pretty active right now. There's a lot of sea ice that's churning around in the Beaufort Gyre, gyre a lot of breakage, a lot of melt ponding apparent by the blue that we see here in the satellite picture, and, and a lot of what appears to be very thin ice. And so if we're going to see rapid melt, uh, Beaufort is one region to look out for in the coming days, but another region of rather serious concern is also the Chukchi, which over the past seven days, as you can see, has seen rather rapid ice loss. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. You can see the ice edge here in rapid retreat close to Russia. See, look at that ice moving. And this is also very thin ice. You can tell by the, the, the dark coloration, the blues and the grays. And note, note the high mobility of ice in this region as well. Talk a little bit about Chukchi later if we have time. Now this region of the Laptev is also uh, seeing much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And we see high mobility of the ice edge and movement of the ice edge as well. And on into the Kara, we see also very rapid ice loss, and, and this is one region to look at. I, I think this region here in the Kara will, will tend to rather rapidly clear as we get into early July. Finally, close to Svalbard, we have a, a much reduced ice edge close to the pole here, and, and this is a zone of somewhat concern. This zone's been shifting back and forth, but uh, if, this, if this is too far to the north, particularly during summer, it's uh, it, it's a bit of a risk for the for the high Arctic region. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and we're going to look at some other factors. Okay, we've got a few minutes. I also want to call to your attention a serious outbreak of wildfires near. I'm sorry, in the Siberian region. So. Notice these red dots here, these are hot spots. You can also notice the smoky coloration, that is smoke from wildfires. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. So we have some rather intense wildfires burning in central Siberia, and you can see some rather large smoke plumes from some of the more northerly blazes and a compound set of blazes in central Siberia, which are also starting to emit very large smoke plumes. Some of these smoke plumes in excess of 300 to 400 miles in length. And as you can see, this is starting to occlude the satellite picture of, of Northern Siberia. This is a region that we want to keep an eye on. Uh, during recent years, we've seen very significant burning and it's, it's really not typical to see very intense fires in these Arctic regions, but, but during recent years, the fires have been quite intense and it's it's a climate change related concern. All right, we've got about a minute left. I'm going to take a look at, at some sea surface temperature anomalies. So earlier we noted a rapid loss of ice in the Chukchi Sea, and one of the regions where we're, why we're seeing such rapid ice loss in this region is much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the range of 4 degrees Celsius, 5 degrees Celsius above average or warmer. And this warm water pool may provide some impetus for, for an increased sea ice melt in this region. In addition, in the Laptev Sea, we also have five degrees Celsius above normal sea surface temperatures and a growing pool of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Beaufort. So those are regions that we definitely need to look at. So overall, Arctic sea ice is approximately sixth to seventh lowest on record at present. We do see warmer than normal conditions throughout the Arctic remaining, and we see some rather large wildfire outbreaks in Siberia that are areas of concern in association with much warmer than normal temperatures there.